Welcome everybody to the podcast. This is the first untapped potential podcast. For those of you who have come over from Simply Soccer, you'll know that we typically um, used to do the podcast on Simply Soccer where we would talk more about soccer topics. But the reason I wanted to move it over to this channel is because recently, um, and for a while probably, we started talking about things that were not necessarily only soccer related but we're also self-development, self-growth related, along with things that are helping you tap into your potential. So I wanted to move the podcast over to this channel because I want to talk more about these topics that not only apply to soccer and can not only be related back to soccer, although some of the topics we go over may, um, but so we can explore new topics that are going to help you tap even more into your potential, help you grow even more, and hopefully can give you the tools moving forward to tap into your potential um, you know, more and more each day. So that's why we've moved the podcast over here. Um, you know, make sure you subscribe to this new channel on Tap Potential because we're going to be doing more than just these podcasts. Um, if you don't know of my other channel, Simply Soccer, then you can ignore all that stuff I just went over. Um, we'll be talking about various topics. You know, I'm going to be talking about books I'm reading that have helped me spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and in many different areas of my life. You know, we're not just going to be talking about practicality on this channel. We'll be talking about the stuff that may be a bit more intangible, but I think is incredibly important. Things like meditation, uh, visualization, being in the moment, things of this nature. So that's what you can expect from these podcasts. Now, since this is the first episode, um, you know, I don't have a set uh, list of ideas of podcast episodes. So if there are things you guys are interested in or want to learn more about, or you're having some things that you need to overcome, some obstacles that you want to overcome and you have questions about, uh, I'm not saying I have all the answers because I definitely don't. You know, I'm learning more each and every day, but feel free to ask me any questions you have on any topic you want to have answered. Um, And if you leave those in the comments, I will try and get to them in a future podcast if I think it's going to benefit everyone who listens. So what I want to do in this first podcast is actually talk about a book that I absolutely love. And it's a book, um, I want to go over this book because it's a book that not only is a good book and one I think everyone should read. It's one of those books that I think if every single person in the world read it and applied what was in it, that the world would just be a better place. It's that impactful, that powerful. And the book is called The Four Agreements. It's um, based on Toltec knowledge, or um, if I can pronounce it, Nagul, or something like that, knowledge, which was basically an ancient people, um, I believe in not South America, Central America, in Mexico maybe, Um, but some of the things that they believed and some of the knowledge that they had, or wisdom I should say, um, is incredible. And and the the way that they lived their lives, the uh, Toltec were considered the the, the wise people of the Nagul, um, I believe, I think I'm telling this correctly, they were considered the wise people and they held these secrets essentially on how to live a fulfilling life. They held these secrets that would essentially kind of tear through the illusion that me and you are faced with every single day. And, and one of the main things they go over is the world you live in and the world you perceive is actually more of an illusion than you think it is. And it's predicated on these beliefs that you've been carrying with you for so long where you don't even, probably don't even remember why you believe certain things. But because you do and you see the world in a certain way, you actually think what you believe is truth when that's not the case. So let's really get into this because um, this is such a great book. And I'm going to go over basically the four agreements, each single one. Now, I'm not going to be able to go over the whole book and give you everything you could possibly get out of reading it. It's actually a relatively short book, but it's very powerful. These are my favorite types of books, the ones that aren't necessarily long, um, but they're short and powerful, meaning, you know, they could be something you could read in an afternoon or just in a couple days, but the impact they have on you... um, is profound. And the greatest thing I think, not the greatest thing, but something I love about the four agreements, because it's so short, you can reread this book over and over again very easily. And each time you reread it, you come with this new perspective to the book. You know, if you think rereading books is not for you and you've already read it once, so therefore you don't need to read it again, I would actually challenge that belief. Because I think, for example, I've read the four agreements many times. And each time I've read it, I've gotten something new out of it, or 
I've reinforced an idea that I wanted to build into my life. So it's very important that you continually expose yourself to the ideas that you want to make a part of you because just reading something once, seeing something once is not going to allow it to sink in. So that's another thing I like about the four agreements and the follow-up book, The Fifth Agreement, which I am currently reading again, um, which is basically the next step after the four agreements, but we'll go over that in a later podcast. I may even make a book review on it. I don't know. So I basically gave you a little bit of an overview of the four agreements. And by the way, I will link this video down below in the description and in the comments if you want to take a look. I don't think it's expensive. Um, but again, it, this is a book that I can honestly sit here and say changed my life and continues to help me live um, an incredible life. So Basically, like I already told you, the Toltecs believed that the that all, most of mankind is what they call, uh, they're in what they call the dream of the humans. Uh, and what this means is we're all under these, these pre, we have these preconceived notions, we have these beliefs about what truth is and what reality is, but they're actually distorted beliefs. They aren't actually what truth is, but we believe it is. So, for example, we may have a belief in a certain religious structure or religious belief system and we really believe that that is the truth but it isn't the truth it doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth it's the truth to us but what's true to us doesn't make it actually in reality true because the truth is the truth no matter what it doesn't care whether you believe in it or you don't believe in it. It doesn't change. It just is the truth, what actually is. And we kind of attach all of this meaning to the truth or what we think the truth is, and we make it basically a virtual truth. So they talk about in the four agreements that it's not a bad thing necessarily to create a virtual truth for yourself, so a belief system, but at least understand that what you believe and your belief systems aren't pure truth. It's not what actually is true. It's just relative truth. And when you start understanding that, you can start shaping your world, um, what they call your dream, basically your virtual reality, to be the way you want it to be. And they talk about how you can either live a heaven on earth experience or a hell on earth experience. And that most people, unfortunately, live a type of hell on earth experience because of the beliefs they have and because of the relative truths that they believe. So the four agreements are designed essentially to be able to knock you out of that belief system and to be able to see more of the world for what it is and to see your beliefs for what they are not actual truth, but relative truth. And once you understand that they are relative truth, which just means it's kind of a reflection of what the real truth is, but not necessarily the whole thing or not even true at all. Once you see that, you can start to shape your beliefs so that they help you live more of a heaven on earth experience, so that you can live with more happiness, more peace of mind, so that you can interact with the rest of the world and other people in their dreams, because everyone's dream is different, everyone's virtual reality is different, um, in whatever way you want. Another way they, they put it is that we're all artists. We are all artists, and basically, the way we use our paintbrush, so to speak, is through our words and our thoughts. You know, our words are our art, and it's what creates our reality, how we think about ourselves, how we think about other people, um, you know, the things we say. You know, these things actually help shape our virtual reality, our dream. Now, this may seem for a lot of you who have never been exposed to these types of ideas, a little woo-woo and a little out there, but, you know, at least be open to this idea. Again, I don't expect you to fully kind of take this idea on board. I just ask you to be open-minded again. So we all kind of walk around basically in our own dream, our own virtual reality, so to speak. And we're artists of our own virtual reality, which means if you are living a pretty miserable experience and in a living hell type of experience, most likely you have created that for yourself. And it's the same on the flip side, where if you're living a more heaven on earth experience, where you're really happy, your life is fulfilled, and you've created your reality in the way that you've wanted, um, it's because um, you've taken these ideas on board and have realized that you can actually take control of your beliefs. Now, it's not easy, um, but it is completely doable. And honestly, the other option is to allow other people to control your belief systems, which is not what you want. One thing just to uh, throw in there before we actually get into what the agreements are is do understand that the belief systems you have in place right now were probably not due to your own wanting of those beliefs. You know, a lot of the beliefs we have, if they go unchecked, we got in childhood based on what our parents or adults told us. And because we were kids, 
that we were very impressionable at those young ages, you know, we've been believing those things for so long and never questioning them. I started questioning many of the beliefs that I was told when I was a kid in my teenage years, even when I was a kid a little bit, but I started seriously questioning the belief systems that were essentially given to me. They weren't developed or learned by me. They were given and thrust upon me. I started questioning them so much in my early 20s to now, and it's really led me to some incredible ideas, revelations, and just changes in my life that have moved me closer to happiness and what I would call the heaven on earth experience. So let's get into the first agreement. And so just go in knowing that your beliefs aren't necessarily true and you should be questioning them quite um, frequently. So the four agreements goes over how you can start living your heaven on earth, essentially start being happier, things of this nature. So the first one, the first agreement is be impeccable with your words. So what does this mean? This means your words are powerful. Your thoughts and your words are powerful. What you say has power. The intent behind your word has so much power. Most people use the word to speak against themselves or to gossip about other people with the intention of hurting themselves or other people. And what you have to understand is there is actually a power in words. You know the old saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words can never hurt me. I question that. I don't actually think that's true. I think words can be incredibly powerful if you let them. I mean, for example, if someone says something to you and you believe it, that has a power over you. You know, for example, if someone says you can't do something and you actually believe what they're saying, guess what's going to happen? You're going to actually start to believe that you can't do whatever it is they said you can't do and that now becomes a part of your reality. You go around thinking you can't do whatever that thing is and you will not do that thing because you fully believe that and have faith in the fact Um, or in the belief that you can't do it. So speak with integrity. Say only what you mean, right? You know, be impeccable with your word. Avoid using the word, like I said, against yourself. So saying things like, I suck, I can't do this. Usually, a lot of the time, we are our biggest obstacle towards achievement or becoming more spiritual spiritual or improving in anything or living our lives in the way we want we're usually the biggest obstacle either because we believe what's coming in from the outside world from other people and their dreams or we tell ourselves things and we have voices in our head that tell us we're not enough we can't do it we can't do that that's not possible and when you actually say it to yourself and start believing it you know you are basically throwing emotional poison at yourself you know you are basically cursing yourself in a way by saying these things about that. When you gossip, you do the same thing. You're talking about other people, but it's always going to come right back around to you and hurt you in some way. When you gossip about others, when you tell other, when you try and bring other people down, we have to understand, and at least in my eyes, and again, in many people's eyes, that we're all in this life together. We are all connected in some way. And you know, a lot of people will try and make it seem like there are differences and that we're not connected. And there seems to be so much emphasis on separating people into groups but at the end of the day we're all a part of the human race and we're all a part of this planet which is all part of the universe and we all have this connectivity with each other and when you gossip and throw you know what they call emotional poison um, at other people it is in the end coming back to hurt you as well not only are you hurting someone a fellow person you're also hurting yourself in that moment so Gossiping is something you want to get out of the habit of doing. And again, for me, this is all about intent. Like, you can joke and have fun and be lighthearted, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It really is about intent. Are you intending to hurt someone? Are you intending to try and make someone feel like they can't do something? It's very powerful, and it only comes back to hurt yourself. So use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Be very careful with what you say. Be impeccable with your word because your word is powerful. Your thoughts are powerful. I'm sure you've heard of things like the law of attraction, you know, the things that you think you bring about. So if you think about positivity most of the time and you act in a positive way and speak positivity and uplift people, you will receive that back. So if you spread the word of love and truth and and connectivity with your fellow man and, and, and connection in that way, you receive that back. And you also empower other people to follow in that path. But if you go around spewing hatred, if you go around spewing emotional poison, trying to bring people down, um, it's usually going to come back around and do the same 
to you. So that's the first one, and this is the one they go over that is the most important out of all the four agreements. This is the hardest and yet most important for of the four agreements, is being impeccable with your word. You know, there are going to be many times, especially since we're so used to not being impeccable with our word, that you're going to break this agreement. And in the, in the four agreements, they tell us that it's okay if you break an agreement. All you do is you forgive yourself, and we get into this a little later, you forgive yourself and you remake the agreement. Persistence is really what's going to help you out here, you know. It's funny, I talk about consistency and persistence all the time on my, my footballing channel, and it applies here too. You know, if you make a mistake and you break your word, so let's say I, I gossip about someone and I, I do it out of jealousy and negativity and with the intent to harm, um, you know, I catch myself doing it, I forgive myself and I remake the agreement and I just I'm try to become more aware of it in the future so I don't make it in the future. And if you keep doing this, you keep up with it, you keep up that awareness, you will eventually get to a point where you're not even doing it at all or it's very rare. So just understand with any of these agreements, there will be times when you break them, but that's fine. That doesn't mean you give up on them. That just means you, you forgive yourself and you make the agreement again. So I'm like, oh, I wasn't impeccable with my word today. Okay, what happened? Why did this happen? How can I you know, be more impeccable with my word moving forward? I forgive myself and go, okay, I've made a mistake here. Um, this is my mistake. I forgive myself. I'm going to be impeccable with my word from now on. And I just keep doing that until you get into the habit of being impeccable with your word as much as possible. Now, these other three agreements, actually, the, the point of them is to help you be impeccable with your word. Now, these other three agreements are very important, but the, they really put emphasis on this first one, the impeccability of your word. So number two is don't take anything personally. And this one I love because I grew up and especially, you know, as a kid, taking things so personally. I was bullied as a kid. You know, I went through depression, very crippling depression as a kid, um, even into my adult years. And one of the reasons I did is I took things super personally. I learned to take things super personally. Understand that, you know, again, this was my programming. This was my belief system that people were out to get me, that you know, people were so concerned with my life that they wanted to harm me. You know, obviously the bullying had something to do with that. But once you learn to not take things personally and you don't start taking it personally, you start to move beyond this. Even if someone's making fun of you, you start to intuitively understand that it has nothing to do with you, that it's something going on within them that is causing them to lash out in that way and to be incredibly negative to you. I mean, they say bullies only bully because of the insecurities in themselves. And a lot of us like to kind of play that off and say, well, that's not true, but it is. It really is. Anytime when I personally tried to bring someone down, it was always something going on within myself that made me want to feel better about myself. And I thought the way to do that was put someone else down or where I thought they would be below me. But again, once you understand that, you start having more sympathy for the people who attack you in that way and you start not taking anything personally. Insults and things people say to you stop, start to rub, start to just wash off. It's, uh, what is it? Water off the duck's back is the saying, you know, it doesn't really affect me. Now, of course, it still does sometimes. Sometimes I break this agreement, but then I just remake it and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger every time that happens to the point where um, I still take some things personally. But now that I'm aware of this, I go, oh, okay, I took that personally. Let's, you know, work on just remembering this has nothing to do with me when someone does this, when someone maybe on, on YouTube on my channel spews hatred or towards me. I know it's nothing personal. You know, it may seem like it's personal because it's directed at you, but the reason, the main reason that that hatred dispute in your direction, and it didn't come in the form of, say, constructive criticism, which is I'm totally fine with, um, is because of something going on within them. So realize that nothing others do is because of you. When you, when you really go deep, when you really break it down as much as you can, nothing others do is because of you. It may be a reaction to you, but that's not because of you. Where, where is that? Why is that reaction happening, for example? It's something to do with them. So I'm going to take a quick drink here before moving on to the next thing. Have a green juice right now. So next is what others do and say is typically, especially if they don't, if they aren't self growth oriented, they're not trying to improve, they're not aware of what you're now becoming aware of, is what others say and do is a projection of their own reality. We talked about how everyone's kind of living in their own virtual reality, their own dream. And it's absolutely true. No one is exactly seeing things the same way as you. And I'll give you a nice analogy in a second to describe that. But what others say and do is a projection of their own reality. 
It's a projection of their beliefs that they have ingrained in their reality, their own dream. So that's another thing. You don't have to take it personally because you know it's just a projection of something going on inside them, some of their belief systems. Think of it this way. Say you're in a mall, and this is an example given in the four agreements, although it might be given in the fifth agreement, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. And what it is, he says, imagine you're in a mall and there's a bunch of movie theaters just lining the wall. And you see a uh, movie theater with your name on it. And you go, oh, wow, okay. And it's the movie of your life. You go and walk in and you see that there's a guy just sitting in the middle watching the movie. And you sit behind him and you watch this movie and you realize this is the story of your life. You're seeing things from your eyes and you're seeing all these people in your life, your friends, your family, you know, people you love, people maybe you dislike, and you're projecting all of these beliefs onto them. You see them in a certain way. So let's say you're, you're looking at your mother or your mom, you know, and you're, you're looking at her and you're seeing her from a different from a certain perspective, from your perspective, and you're, you're in the movie, and you kind of notice the person in front of you is actually you, watching your movie. You're the main character in your movie, and there's all these secondary characters, which are your friends, family, and anyone else who comes in contact in your life. And you're like, okay, this is cool. Yeah, this is how this person is, how that person is. This is, this is how I see things. Cool. You decide to get up and go to another movie theater. You go in, and there's a lady in the middle, and you sit next to her, and you see that her eyes are glued on the screen, and you see it's her life. And you suddenly see yourself in the movie, but this time not from your eyes. You see how someone else sees you. And you notice that this is your mom's movie. And you can see the beliefs and the projections your mom has about you. And you go, wait, what a sec wait a second. This isn't how I am. This is why is she seeing me this way? This is not actually how I am. This is not me. But she's, from her reality, sees you in a certain light based on her dream and her beliefs. And maybe you even get a little bit offended because you're seeing how someone else is seeing you and knowing that this is not the way you see yourself. This is not how you are. And maybe you leave the theater a little bit angry, but the point is you're doing that to the secondary characters in your movie, just like people are doing that to the secondary characters in theirs. You can go into another theater and see how your friends see everyone as well. And what the point of this is, is everyone has their own little reality. They see people differently in these realities. They project their own beliefs into those realities. So the way you see yourself or the way you are, Someone else is going to see you differently, right? Someone else is not going to see you in the same light based on their belief systems. Even if you've done nothing, for example, I mean, if you ever had someone who just was for some reason angry at you um, and, and, for, and you didn't know why and you couldn't figure it out, well, it could be just down to something in their belief system, something that you did that they deemed to be something they, they, uh, is, is really against their beliefs, right? So just understand that when that other people have their own realities, their own little virtual realities and the way they see things and they will project that onto you. But it doesn't make it truth, does it? And this is an example of how our realities and our belief systems are not necessarily truth. How can they be when I see myself in one way and if I see how someone else sees me, I go, what, what the hell? That's not how I am. So which one's true? It's all a relative truth, relative to us and our belief system and our dream. So the other thing they say is when you stop taking things personally, you become immune to the options, the opinions, the actions of others. You won't be the victim of needless suffering because you won't care. You won't be taking things personally. You won't, you will be immune to the opinions of others have of you. If someone has an opinion of you, you just go, okay, well, that's the perspective of that person from their reality. It doesn't make it true. If someone does something against you, an action, for example, again, you're immune to it because you know not to take it personally, because you know that even if it's directed towards you, not to take it personally, because you know that in their reality, um, in their virtual reality, um, again, it's not the truth. It's not how you actually are. It's how they see the world and they're reacting appropriately or, or to that. And this is one of my favorites because it's really taught me that when someone does something I disagree with or when... Um, you know, someone maybe doesn't agree with me and gets mad at me that I'm able to let go of the situation easily. Again, it's still a little bit difficult. I have to keep remaking the agreement, but I found it is so much easier now to let go, let go of what people think and to forgive and to move on. Okay. And moving right along now to number three, this is another really good one. This is moving into the other end of the spectrum where in number two, you don't take anything personally. Number three is don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. And, and what I mean by this and what the four agreements means is find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Don't assume things, right? Don't assume a person acted in a certain way because of this, this, or that, right? 
Like we just said, they're, they're projecting from their virtual reality and you're projecting from your virtual reality. You're seeing things differently. So maybe they do something where you would have done it differently. So you assume that they're doing it in the way you would, but that's just projecting from your dream, from your virtual reality. And therefore, you know, it may be something completely different to them. So ask questions, maybe ask why they did that. Don't make an assumption, you know, express what you really want. Don't assume that people know what you want because they don't, you know, um, they go over in the four, four agreements that one of the biggest breakdowns in things like relationships, marriages, friendships is because so many people make assumptions about the other person knowing what they want, but they don't. How can someone know exactly what you want if you don't express what it is you want? Because again, from their virtual reality, they want different things. They see things differently. And so they will do, they will act accordingly. So maybe they think you want one thing, but you don't want that at all you know, but they'll act that way because that's something they want. And they'll project that and think, well, that's what I would want. So that person would want it as well, which is not true. It's an assumption that just isn't true. So you have to find the courage to ask the questions, you know, be like just asking someone in a, for example, if you're in a relationship, you know, what is it you want? You know, I want to give you what you want. I want to be able to, you know, you know, to cultivate this relationship. And, and I don't want to be guessing at what you want. I want to know exactly how you feel, what you want, how I can, how I can be more enriching in your life, you know, and also for me to express to you what I want. So there's no breakdown in communication because we assume always that one person is doing something from a certain motive. But again, it's just coming from our belief system in our reality that they would do that where they could be doing it for a completely different reason. So don't make assumptions about other people. And this one's hard. This one is hard. All of these are pretty difficult, but again, you just, you make the agreement and you try your best, which we're going to get into. And then if you fail and you break the agreement, you remake the agreement and you keep going. And again, you get stronger and stronger each time. Okay. So communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstand, uh, misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. So much drama comes from assumptions. You know, you could absolutely hate someone and then actually break it down and go, why do I hate this person? Well, they haven't actually ever done anything to me. I've just assumed all this stuff. Maybe someone gossiped about them and I assumed it was true. For example, someone might come up to you and be like, this person's, you know, I hate this person. They're such a jerk. And you assume that's true. Again, relative truth. Maybe to that person it's true, but then you have to think, well, what are they basing that off of as well? They could have just been, you know, that person could have just had a bad day and reacted poorly to them. So now they think they're a jerk. You know, you really have to break it down and go, why is it that this is the assumption? Why do I think this? Is it based on an, an assumption? And you're going to be able to just remove so much unnecessary drama from your life when you stop making these assumptions, when you stop trying to assume how other people are thinking. Because the fact, again, with the, with the analogy of the movie theater going into someone else's movie where you're a secondary character, you'll, you get to kind of go into their shoes and see they see the world differently because their beliefs are different. Their virtual reality is different. So when you stop making assumptions about what their virtual reality is and just ask them, just ask them to let you into their world and be like, what are you thinking? Why do you think this way? And that way there's no confusion. And don't judge them on that. If they think in a different way than you, it's not, a, you know, a, uh, um, an invitation to judge them. It's just for understanding purposes, for clarity. You know, if, for example, there's something that's very traumatic to you um, and I'm not aware of it and I somehow do something that causes that trauma to resurface, you know, I, I, I mean, you can't really hold me responsible. I am not sure. I don't know. I can't assume um, what's going to do what. But if you communicate to me, hey, look, this is something that I'm really struggling with and I'm working through it. But, you know, when you do this, it really just reminds me of, I don't know, this, this or that. And of course you can get over ridiculous with this. Again, you don't want to appease people to, to a certain degree where it's causing you to not be the way you want to be, but let's say it's reasonable. Um, and then you know not to do it. Now you're aware with that awareness, you know, there's no assumption making. You're like, oh, this absolutely will hurt this person. So I'm going to avoid doing that. Right. So with just this agreement, you can completely transform your life by not making assumptions because assumptions not only project your beliefs onto someone else and, you know, hurt whatever potential relationship or connection you would have with that person, but they ultimately come back to hurt you because you make assumptions about, for example, um, if you're going to do something that's scary, you make all these negative assumptions about what could happen. You know, no one likes to make positive assumptions, which I would say don't even do that either, although that would be better. But we, we like to think like, for example, when we're going into a situation, we assume what's going to happen. 
right? And when you do that, you're actually more likely to play it out so that that does happen. But when you stop making assumptions, you know, you stop going into things with this baggage, with this idea that it's gonna go this way or that way, and you stop, you start allowing what's going to happen to happen. And you know, that can be scary, I get it, because assumptions, they, they, there's a function for them, it's a protective mechanism, but it's not one that really serves us anymore. So with this agreement, the third agreement, don't make assumptions about others, and have the courage to ask the questions to other people for clarity so you don't assume things and to express what it is you want you know don't be afraid to do that and that again is going to completely transform things i've been doing that more recently and it's it's it has been um helping significantly and i will be continuing to do this now number four is what helps make the rest of these agreements sink in this is one i always remind myself of and it's amazing how just reminding myself of this um little thing just these these four little words has impacted my life. It's, it's insane. I, I, I've been using it with this podcast. I've been, I do it whenever I'm making videos, when I'm playing football, when, whatever it is, when I'm going throughout my day. And number four, the fourth agreement is always do your best. Always do your best. And why that plays in so great is let's say you are trying to be impeccable with your words. You're doing your best, but you break it. You're not impeccable. That's fine. Absolutely fine. You were at least doing your best. You forgive yourself and then you do your best again. And the thing is, your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different every moment. For example, if you're very tired, the best you can give in that moment is going to be different than the best you could give when you're energized. But no matter what, you're still giving your best. If you're sick opposed to you're healthy, you can give a lot more when you're healthy, but you can still give your best when you're sick, doing as much as you can, right? So if you're in a situation where you're nervous and you're, there's all these different emotions going on in you, sure, that's going to be something where you can't give as much possibly than when you're really confident and not nervous and in the zone. But you can still do your best in that moment, right? And what this does is under any circumstance, you start doing your best. And you will start to avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. Because no matter what, you can look back at any situation and go, well, I did my best. I did absolutely everything I could, you know, under the circumstances. You know, I was sick, but I still did everything I could. And I can look back at that with pride and go, I did everything I could there. You know, you can look back at another situation and go, I didn't give 80%, I didn't give 20%, I didn't give 90%, I gave 100%. I was very tired, but I still gave as much of myself as I could in that moment. And when you start looking back at things like that, and when I start looking back at things I do each day, and I go, did I give my all in that day? And I, and I can say yes to that, you know, that is such a fulfilling, fulfilling feeling. And that is actually going to help you to start using these agreements more and more each day because you go through each of the agreements and you're going to break them sometimes. And what happens, I think, is when most people start a new belief system or habit or anything, when they break it the first time or the first few times, they start giving up because they're like, well, I've already broken it. I can't do this, blah, blah, blah. You know, these limiting beliefs. Again, the limiting beliefs of your virtual reality, which you might want to change those so you can live more of your heaven on earth. But if you always do your best, then you go, oh man, okay, I broke this. I, I was just an autopilot. You know, I just, oh man, oh, whatever. I was doing my best. You know, I know that the more I do this, my best will become better. So I forgive myself and I'm gonna make the agreement again. So let's say I take something personally and I'm just doing my best to not take anything personally, but again, I have these belief systems within me still that I have to get rid of. So let's say someone says something to me and I take it very personally, right? And then I realize, oh no, I took something personally. And I go, well, that's okay. Mistakes happen. You're doing your best to try and make a change here. I forgive myself and now I'm gonna do my best again to not take anything, per anything personally. And if it happens again, that's fine. I'll forgive myself and do my best. And my best is always going to get better because I will become more aware of what, of the things, for example, I, I tend to take personally and work on not taking those things personally. You know, I become more aware um, of why it's happening and I can work through it. But if you always do your best in everything you do, no matter what the situation, no matter if you're tired or energized, sick or healthy, nervous, confident, whatever it is, if you always do your best, you will look back at every situation and you can feel happy with it. I mean, imagine if you went through your day doing your best at every moment no, with no excuses. And, you, and no matter how you're feeling, you always did your best in the moment. 
So you're tired, so maybe you won't get as much done as when you're energized, but you still do the best you can while being tired. Imagine looking back on your day, oh, even just a day of doing that. What would that look like for you? What would it look like from the moment, if, for, if from the moment you got up, just the moment you got up, you did your best in everything for the whole day. You gave as much as you can. And again, I don't want you to think of this, this means you're working super hard to the point where you're exhausting yourself. I just mean in everything you do, you just give your best. So throughout the day, you do your best to be impeccable with your word, not take anything, per take anything personally and not make assumptions. You also do your best with your morning routine. You do your best with your work. You do your best with your workout, right? You're completely present while you're working out and you, you're, you're, you're remembering everything you need to do, the proper form, everything. And you do that the whole day until night, you go to sleep and you reflect upon your day and you look back at everything you did and you can say to yourself, wow, I did my best on everything. I, was, I did my best with being impeccable with my word. I broke it a couple times, but I did my best. I forgave myself and I moved on. And the rest of the day, I was impeccable with my word. I did my best not to make assumptions. It was hard and I did make some assumptions, but I did my best. And then I forgave myself for making those assumptions. I recognized that I shouldn't be doing it, but I forgave myself because I am human. I do make mistakes. And I continued to do my best. And the assumptions became less and less and less because I gained more and more awareness, right? So if you always do your best, you become aware of these agreements and you, you commit, you also have to commit to agree to, to these agreements and you always do your best, you will find that your life will improve significantly. And so guys, I think that's where we're going to end it with this podcast. So that was um, obviously something I'm very passionate about. This is a book that I just so recommend that you, you read because I've gone over, I've scratched the surface here, but this is something that I would love for you to read and really have sink in. Again, this is, you know, from my perspective and from my reality, what I'm telling you, you know, maybe from yours, you don't want to do it. Maybe you think differently. It doesn't, I don't know. All I know is this book has helped my life incredibly. Doing these four agreements has helped my life. You know, I love being reminded of them every single day. So making this podcast, has been really cool for me as well, because I'm like, oh, I can remind myself of the four agreements even more and let them sink in even more. Um, I will have the video, the book linked down below. If you want to get it, if you want to purchase this book, um, it's just such a great little book. Um, there's also a book after it called The Fifth Agreement, which I really recommend after you've read The Four Agreements a few times. Um, that's the book I'm currently reading for like the third time. It goes over more of these ideas and expands the, on them even more and goes even deeper. And it's, it's so fantastic. And I am honestly trying to live my life um, by these four agreements and also the, the fifth agreement, what's in that as well. So thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. I really, um, have enjoyed making it. I was, um, this was really cool for me because I was in a complete flow state while I went over this podcast, you know, 37 minutes in and, you know, it, it's gone by like within a second for me, which is, is so cool. Um, which you can tell this is something I'm very passionate about. So thank you so much. Please like and share the podcast if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. This is the first podcast, so I really want to hear what you think um, and whether you like this kind of thing. Let me know of other ideas you want me to cover down in the description or description, the comments down below. And let me know if there's, if you have any thoughts on this, um, if you want any, you know, any comments from me on, on, on some clarification on things. Um, because again, I want to, you know, help you as much as possible. I want to be able to learn these things for myself and then pass them on to you and get you into a, a state where you're going out and, you know, growing as much as you can, discovering stuff like this for yourself as well. All right, guys, so I'm going to leave it there because I'm in such a flow state right now. I can keep going on for another hour, but I don't want to make this too long. So I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe if you have not already. We're going to be doing these podcasts once a week. Um, and we're also going to have videos throughout the week as well. So thank you so much. And I will see you in the video next video, or I will talk to you in the next podcast.